In this lesson, we are going to see how we can apply our knowledge of polynomial division to come to an important conclusion about the relationship between the remainder and divisor. Let's say we want to know the remainder when some polynomial, p of x, is divided by a divisor, d of x, of the form x minus a. Hopefully, you can think of one way to solve this problem. We could use either synthetic or long division to determine the quotient and remainder. But this is time consuming and labor intensive. Also remember that in this case, we are only concerned with finding the remainder, not the quotient. Let's see if there's a better way to find the remainder by looking at an example divisor of x minus 2. Recall the division statement, which says that the dividend polynomial, p of x, can be written as the product of the quotient q of x and the divisor d of x plus the remainder r of x. For a given dividend polynomial, we'll know p of x and d of x, and we want to find r of x. Is there a way that we could eliminate q of x from this equation to leave us with one unknown, r of x? What if we evaluated the equation at some value of x that set the divisor, d of x, to zero? Then, no matter what the quotient is, the q of x times d of x product would be zero, since anything times zero is zero. Let's try to find a value of x that would cause this to happen a value of x that sets the example divisor, x minus 2, to 0. We add 2 to both sides, giving us x equals 2. Note that 2 is also the a value from our divisor of the form x minus a. Now that we've found the value of x that sets our divisor to 0, we can evaluate the division statement at this value of x. We see that for a polynomial p of x being divided by the divisor x minus 2, p of 2 or the polynomial evaluated at x equals 2, is the same as the remainder. This can be generalized to lead us to the remainder theorem, which says that the remainder due to the division of a polynomial p of x by a divisor d of x of the form x minus a is equal to p of a. Remember that p of a just means the polynomial evaluated at x equals a. Let's see this in action with an example polynomial, x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 6, and the same divisor, x minus 2. We will first determine the remainder using polynomial division, and then by using the remainder theorem. The two methods should give us the same result. I'm going to use synthetic division to make the process a little faster, but note that you could use long division if you prefer, and the steps for that are laid out in the graphic on the lesson page for this section. The divisor is already in the x minus a form, with the a value being 2, so we'll write a 2 beside the half box symbol. Next, we write the coefficients of the dividend polynomial in the upper half of the box. They are 1, 1, 1, and 6. Then we drop down the first coefficient, the 1, to underneath the box, and multiply by the 2 to give us 2, which we write underneath the next coefficient, which is again 1. We then add the 1 to the 2 to give us 3, which we write underneath the box. The process now repeats. 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 plus 6 is 7, 2 times 7 is 14, and 6 plus 14 is 20. Now interpreting our result from right to left, we have a remainder of 20, a constant term of 7, an x term coefficient of 3, and an x squared term coefficient of 1. Our quotient is x squared plus 3x plus 7 with a remainder of 20. Let's write the division statement which says that the dividend polynomial, p of x, is equal to the quotient, q of x, times the divisor, d of x, plus the remainder, r of x. Now let's employ the remainder theorem, which we saw on the last slide. The remainder due to the division of a polynomial, p of x, by a divisor, d of x, of the form x minus a, is equal to p of a. Applied to this division, the remainder theorem tells us that p of 2, which is the a value from our divisor, x minus 2, will be equal to the remainder. Let's evaluate the entire division statement at x equals 2 to give us further insight as to why this is true. When we do this, we see that the divisor on the right-hand side will evaluate to 0. And since it is being multiplied with the quotient we found earlier, it doesn't matter what the quotient evaluates to, since anything times 0 gives us 0. This leaves us with just 20 on the right-hand side. Remember that 20 is the remainder from dividing our polynomial p of x by the divisor x minus 2. Now evaluating the left hand side, which is p of 2, or the dividend polynomial evaluated at x equals 2, we have 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2, plus 6. 
the sum is 20. As you can see, the polynomial p of x evaluated at x equals 2 is equal to the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus 2. This is the remainder theorem in action. From now on, if we want to know the remainder from dividing a polynomial by some divisor of the form x minus a, we don't need to actually perform the division. We can simply evaluate p of a to determine the remainder. This is a very powerful conclusion and is useful when we want to test whether some divisor binomial is a factor of a given polynomial. More on that later.